tutorial to help with processing the Milky Way. I've been processing the Milky Way for a few years now and uh, and I've learned some some techniques that I think are a faster way to process them you know there's some some lessons learned on the way so I just wanted to share with my friends and then hopefully that will be helpful uh, for your future uh, astrophotography or night photography shots so I basically selected uh, two images here and I shot these at uh, Pemaquit lighthouse area in up in Maine and uh, I already worked on these so I'll, uh, I'll just reset those so that we have a clean slate to work with so I use ACR which is Adobe's uh, bridge similar to Lightroom but uh, simpler and uh, this works fine for me so I've been using it for a while now so so if, if you're using something else it'll be the same thing I mean I have the, the, cons uh, the console the options uh, they're almost the same so it shouldn't be a problem so I've got these two images let me show you these so, so here we have one shot and this is the second shot you know, let me just select these two guys There we go. Okay, no problem. There we go. So, these are the two shots. If you can see, this shot has a blurred foreground, but the background is sharper. So, I took this just for the sky, just for the Milky Way. And this one has a slightly sharper foreground but a blurred background so the whole idea was to have two shots and try to get the whole uh, scene into into focus generally when you're shooting at the Milky Way you'll probably be shooting somewhere around f2.8 or closer to that or lower or whatever the lowest aperture for your camera is and for mine I had 2.8 so I did that and then with 2.8 the problem is uh, there's very little depth of field uh, especially for objects that are close to the camera so uh, that's why I ended up shooting two I mean also you'll notice that the foreground is light you know has light generally with the night photography you don't have that kind of much light only unless you really go for long exposure so what we did was we used an LED lamp to brighten the foreground because the flowers had color so it kind of made sense to show them off so even though they might be competing a little bit with the, with the sky but uh, it, it uh, didn't look too bad so uh, and it's for exercise purposes because we'll be merging the two shots it's probably not a good idea probably, it's probably a good idea sorry so uh, let's just start processing these so I'll select these two images and I'll open them up in Photoshop raw and I use control you know command command R I'm using a Mac so control R if you're on Windows and command R if you're on Mac to open the images and control A to select both the images so that we you can work on both of them at the same time in this screen I really don't do a lot you know in ACR but I just do the basics which is like I mean I go in do my lens profile correction uh, generally the software will pick up the lens but in this case it's I was just using the Tokina and uh, the, the software doesn't recognize it automatically once you give it Tokina then it goes in and does you know does does find that it's a Tokina 1116 2.8 for Nikon so that's pretty good so it, that got rid of the halos you know the the vignettings around the screen and then some some lens distortion the second is the chromatic aberration so you know generally you would see on high contrast areas some some fringes light fringes so 
we usually do that and if there is anything that needs to be done manually then I'll just come over and talk to the screen and and you know fix that but uh, usually the lens correction does a does a fine job on its own lens veneering if you needed it you know just a little bit you know brighten dark you know brighten the corners but uh, I don't think there's much needed maybe I'll just go a little bit you know for for the sake of example once you're done with that uh, then it's the white balance white balance what I've found the best way to do it is to crank up the variance and the saturation zoom in and then drag your temperature slider so that you get the maximum details of the color generally if it's all blue that's not good and if it's all yellow that's also not good so you're not getting the full spectrum of color so you just drag it down to a point where you can see the color of the stars and and at the same time you've got uh, you got uh, you got all the natural colors as well so and then you can also play with this color slider see where is the maximum detail of colors that you get so here we got that 3700 I mean 3800 is usually a good I've found to be a good you know good number in terms of temperature but that depends on the on the light pollution and all the other things affected so if you're in a really really dark area somewhere around 3800 probably be, be fine so just set the vibrance and the colors back perhaps boost a little bit of the saturation give, give the image some pop and uh, you can see the histogram is very left shifted so that's a problem generally you would want the histogram to be in the center or exposed on for the right and then underexposed image that will give you lesser noise but in this case I had a 30 second exposure and I saw 3200 and my limitation was I didn't want it to go beyond 3200 but if the camera allows you to go beyond that or you have a faster lens then then uh, certainly you should try that out that probably is a recommended approach I'll just bump up the exposure a little bit give some, some light in the sky and at the same time I don't want to blow out the, the details in the, in the stars so I'll just bring down the the highlights so if you go in closer don't want to lose any details in the sky you know so it also does that this highlight slider also helps with that this area which is which had the which had uh, some light pollution there so depending on where you want then I'll probably just go all the way down and at the same time crank up the contrast a little bit not to make the darks too dark you know and push up the blacks a little bit you know to give some details in the shadow areas okay clarity you know somewhere around 5 to 10 usually works too much gives a fake look and also pulls up details in the highlights so so let's just check if it didn't pull out any details in the highlights so probably a little bit should be should be fine there we go So this is the image uh, in ACR. Uh, this is just about what I would do in ACR. Uh, white balance, a little bit of exposure, contrast, 
saturation, lens correction and stuff. So once I've got these done, I will just open up, uh, close it. See if I got the, both the images right. Open individual image. This Photoshop CC is, I found it to be a little bit buggy compared to the previous versions. So, for one, it doesn't show you the preview and the thumbnails. So, I mean, see, it's a difference in what I see. And I open the image up, and then what it shows over here. So, Photoshop has some fixing to do. So once I got these images, I can select these two images, go into Tools, Photoshop, and then load files into Photoshop layers. So what we want to do is open these files up in Photoshop and then work on these as layers. So, and the reason being, we, we, we want to stack that uh, focused uh, shots and then combine the two so I'm zooming out right here okay I got my layer layer palette over here and ever since we upgraded to the latest 2015 it's been running very slow so so this is what it looks like uh, Let's just drag this layer into this. Okay, I'll just drag it over here. Okay. okay. I don't need this. Close. Okay. So if you if you look at this, you'll see the top layer it has the foreground and focused, and the uh, layer below it. Uh, a layer below it has the foreground focus and the layer on top has uh, stars in focus so what we want is we want uh, to bring out the lower level the flowers to become uh, visible so what we'll do is we'll do a layer mask this is the layer mask button command then press this layer back, add layer mask and uh, control command I or control I click on the layer first control I so, not good so, okay separate this layer control I oh that's going on Just go back and do all that. Okay. There we go. No. Okay. So when I was going on, I pressed Command and then the uh, uh, mask. But all I needed to do was just come in, press the mask. So I've got the mask, and mask can be inverted by Command I. So I'm just inverting the mask. So black basically means it conceals everything below it. So we're essentially seeing the the lower lower level, the lower layer. The top layer is uh, invisible. But since we need the top layer to show the sky, so we'll take a brush with white as a foreground color and black as a background color. We will in the opacity set to 100. We'll paint white. So this will reveal the sharpened area. And I'll show you the mask in a bit. So this is the mask. And I press the slash key. So what the slash key does is shows you the mask in red. You can also do a alt and click on the mask and give you a black and white 
uh, view of the mask. So you do an alt and click on the mask again. You'll go back to the normal view. So now if you zoom in, you'll see that the sky is uh, is sharp as it should be. You know, this is I'm clicking and clicking on the mask on the layer, and then this foreground layer shows the focused flowers in the foreground so sorry you always have to click on the mask when you're drawing if you by mistake do it on the image it will make it dark so you don't want to paint black over the actual image so so just let's, if you want to just uh, fine tune brush size small and then just paint black in this area so that so that you only have the uh, the flowers and the, and the bushes selected this is probably in pretty far away so should should need to do this part so so this is what it looks like by the way I just remember I didn't do the noise I should have done the noise as well so uh, let me go back and tell you about the noise part so this let's just open these images together control A noise probably you know if you go into full 100% Crank it up till till the time you don't you start seeing you know artifacts. I mean you don't want the artifacts. So somewhere around 50 looks good to me. Maybe you know, detail also has actual artifacts. Now the the thing that I like is mask. If you press the Alt button, click on mask, and then you drag it to the right. This will show you the mask where sharpening is applied. I only want it applied where there's some definition like the stars or the foreground this empty area really I don't need the mask to be applied there so you know somewhere around here should be fine otherwise you'll add noise in all the other areas and sharpening noise just keep on going see where you like it you don't want to go too far but uh, somewhere around here looks okay color noise I usually just you know play the you know you, you can just crank it all the way up I mean there's you know I I don't see a disadvantage of doing that unless it's, it makes your images soft in this case I don't think it makes a lot of difference so I just do it all the way so this is with noise reduced and sharpening applied so there we go. It's got that thing going. So this wouldn't have that sharpening and the noise produced. So we'll just do it for, for the sake of tutorial. We'll just keep on going here. So once you have these two images merged with the foreground and the background, you create merge all the layers. Shift Alt Command and E merges all the layers together. If you like it the way it is, that's fine. If you don't. You can modify it. Uh, generally, I try to modify it with curves. I mean, one of the areas that I want to work on is contrast. So I select the dark, dark area and the bright area, and I do the contrast between the two. And this helps bringing out the details in the Milky Way. You don't want to overdo it. Or blow out the highlights in the in the sky, but uh, just enough to bring some details in. This is what it looks like before, before and after. Let's probably just drag this down.
Okay, now the total overruns now get the this is before and after. Now it looks a little bit too bright to me, so I'll just bring down the brightness a little bit. And just don't want to do it too much dark and the shadows too much. Do it later. So we'll just do dark and hell image, whole image. Okay. My image is darkened. Contrast has been added. This is the contrast. This is the darkening. And maybe a little bit more. And pull up the shadows. Okay, so also I want to fix this area. This area has some light pollution here, so what I'll do is I'll take the curves and I'll darken this a little bit. And I'll go into the individual channels to see if I can merge. Where's the colors? So red channel, I load that, and I am gonna add the blue channel. There we is the blue channel. So I'm gonna invert the mask so that would hide all the changes, and then I'm gonna paint in the area that I want to show this effect. So I'll reduce my opacity to 50%. Make sure my brush is soft and just start painting and I can do multiple passes if I want there's some yellow here so I'll add that over here so over here so, so see you see it fixed the yellowish glow that we had with the light because of the light pollution. So you can, you can do whatever you think works for you. What I also do is I feather my selections. So I just just crank it up, you know, just improve. So feather my brush strokes till it looks natural. Sometimes there are hard edges you want don't want those. So just to look if you want to look at the mask, this is what the mask looks like. This is with the changes, without the changes. So it seems to me the blue is a little bit too much. So I'm gonna tone down the blue a little bit. And see if I can change the reds a little bit. So if I go there and I change the green channel, and if I lower the whole color opacity, and here I don't like this effect, so I'll, I'll paint black. So this this gets removed. I don't like that. So I'll paint black over here. Paint black over here. This is what my mask looks like, so it's too bright, so I'll just turn it down a little bit over here. And I'll fix this. So this is what the image looks like. So I think what it needs is a little bit of boost. And perhaps darkening of the shadows. So take this dropper, darken the shadows a little bit, highlight the bright, don't want to do too much, and I only want this to be. 
apply to the sky so I'll just paint black on the mask so that this does not affect the foreground And at the same time, it's too leash. I want to brighten up the Milky Way a little bit. So, take my curves, take it over here, bring it up, do an inverse, take my brush, 50% opacity, paint white on the Milky Way. So what this will do is brighten up the Milky Way, but also kind of makes the edges a little bit hard. So for that, I will go to the mask, double click on the mask and do a feather to the time it looks natural. Somewhere around here it looks natural. Still you see that the mask has been applied, this is the mask. This is without and with. So if you wanted to make it a little bit more contrasty, you can certainly do so without blowing it too much. So and then you just turn down the brightness a little bit. So this is looking pretty good in my opinion. And if you think the foreground's too bright, so you can take another curve adjustment layer, darken the foreground a little bit, raise the shadows, invert the mask and Paint where you want it to be applied. So darken the flowers from over here. Darken this area. Darken this area. What happens is when you when you Underexpose the saturation gets increased. So if you just change your mass layers blending mode to luminosity, it will only affect the 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 luminosity and not the saturation. So if, not the color. So so if you do the color, this is what the color looks like. But you and this is what it looked like in normal mode. So if you do it just the luminosity, oh, almost the same. Anyhow, so you can always desaturate with another desaturation layer. Layer, for example, if you wanted to desaturate the foreground, use saturation layer, desaturate the foreground. I don't think it's needed, but just for the sake of discussion, and I'm showing it to you. Uh, inverse the mask, paint white where you want it to be desaturated and at the same time if you want to saturate the Milky Way use saturation saturate inverse and paint where you want it to be saturated you want this to be saturated it's just just this area so you can crank it up a little bit if you want to there we go So this is the Milky Way processed and uh, I don't do any additional sharpening now because it just has a lot of artifacts and it doesn't look nice so if you think that there's still some you know uh, contrast needed you can always apply that. Personal preferences is up to you. 
and I think I this area is a bit too bright so I just probably want to darken it a little bit so I add another curves layer darken darken reverse the mask and then paint white on the sides so that it looks consistent and here we only want to do the luminosity or, or just really just try the color color doesn't do it for us luminosity okay so let's just do luminosity so there we go so it looks a little bit more dramatic so if this is what you're looking for you can always adjust and you can always sub adjust the opacity if you like if it's too much you can change the opacity to where you think it looks nice so, so here we go so once you have that set uh, you can just save for the web file export export as I like to do it for JPEG and uh, 2000 maximum size and by cubic automatic I'll let it decide and just export it so this is in the 72 DPI which is needed for online uh, display for printing obviously you need 300 DPI but uh, this works perfectly fine for we're saving it online so I'll just call it uh, first tutorial Milky Way takes a while to save it it's all saved excellent well I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and uh, hopefully I'll be uploading more in the future. So let me know what you think. Take care. Bye.